Hey everyone, this is Mike from OTG Gaming, and today we'll look at Super Nintendo emulation via RetroArch. We'll cover the best cores, best settings, and the best shaders. Let's take a look. So first of all, in the online updater, you'll notice that there are a ton of Super Nintendo cores to choose from. Rather than highlight each one, I thought I would share the three that I feel work for most best use case scenarios. First up is Bee's Ness, which is the most accurate Super Nintendo emulator available. It has been in development for quite a long time, so it has minimal bugs and glitches. I think it's the best if you're looking for the most accurate original game experience. However, it does require pretty powerful hardware to run, so it's likely not going to work if you're using a handheld or on an underpowered desktop. In addition, it also does not support retro achievements, nor does it allow the use of cheats, unless you want to break away from the mainline version of Bees Nest and use one of the Bees Nest Mercury forks. In my experience, these are also good, but not as up to date as the mainline Bees Nest. Next up is SNES 9X. The good thing about this emulator is it is highly compatible with most NES games. It gets really good performance even on lower end hardware, so it might work good for you if you're on a handheld or phone and it's very user friendly and stable. The only con is it is less accurate compared to Bees Ness. Finally, I'd like to mention Misen S, which is a good middle ground between Bees Ness and SNES 9X. It provides very accurate emulation, very good compatibility with most games, but it too also requires a little bit more powerful hardware. I can't really recommend one of these cores over the other, what I do is keep all three available, and then if I find one is not working very well for a particular game, I'll switch over to one of the other cores. If there's a different Super Nintendo core that you prefer using, please let me know in the comments below. You know I love to hear from you, my friends. Let's move on to importing your content or getting your games into RetroArch so you can actually play them. I recommend keeping all of your ROM files organized into separate folders, as you can see here. I have a folder for each system, and then I put the individual ROMs in those folders. Then from RetroArch in the main menu, you can go to Import Content and then Scan Directory. You're going to want to navigate to the folder where your SNES ROMs are stored, and then select Scan This Directory. RetroArch will then scan the folder and add the games to your library. Now if this doesn't work, you can also try a manual import by again, in the main menu, going to Import Content but this time choosing manual scan. Go once again into the content directory and select your Super Nintendo ROMs location. Under system name, make sure that you choose Nintendo Super Nintendo Entertainment System and then start scan. At this point, you should have a playlist in your menu for Super Nintendo games. A cool feature of RetroArch is that it will automatically download the box art for your games if it recognizes them, so this is a very good reason to use a good naming convention for your ROM file names. Now if for some reason RetroArch is not grabbing your box art, you can go back into the online updater and then enable on-demand thumbnail downloader. Or you can just run the playlist thumbnails updater to grab all of your playlist thumbnails in one shot. To run a game, you simply select it in the playlist, choose Run, and then the core you'd like to use. We'll now dive into a couple of the core options available in RetroArch for Super Nintendo that I think are useful and cool. Let's start with overclocking. There are a number of Super Nintendo games that suffer from slowdown. The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. Using overclocking, we can eliminate that. Here's a good example, the game Gradius 3. Here's what this early section of the game looks like with overclocking off. And now here it is with a 200% overclock. You can see that the experience is much smoother. All three of the cores that I've recommended include an overclocking section that is relatively easy to find. Once you find it, you can adjust the CPU overclock up or down to achieve your desired result. Now be aware, going too high can break certain games, so this is something you want to test on a per game basis. Another nifty little feature we can use is High Definition Mode 7. You might remember that Mode 7 was a big selling point of the Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, super power. 
but basically allow background layers to be scaled and rotated, creating kind of a pseudo 3D effect. It's what gives games like Super Mario Kart and F-Zero their dynamic rotating perspectives. This feature is exclusive to Bees Nest for now, making it a great option if you want to freshen up your Mode 7 games. To enable it, you just go into the HD Mode 7 menu and set the scale to your preferred resolution. You can leave the rest of the settings here at their defaults unless you like to tinker. And here's a look at the results. Depending on the core you're using, there's a lot more tinkering we could do, especially with graphics options within the core settings themselves. But most of what I want to achieve, we're going to use shaders to accomplish. So let's move on to that part of the video. Shaders in RetroArch are graphical filters that enhance or alter the visual appearance of games. They can add effects like scan lines, smoothing, or CRT screen emulation to improve or change the look of retro games. It really is one of the best features of RetroArch and one of my favorite things to play around with. If you'd like to use shaders, I would recommend starting off by updating your shader files. You can do this by going to the main menu, online updater, and then update shaders. Take note of whether it says slang or GLSL because you'll need to know this for later. Now with the game running, open the quick menu and go down to the shaders menu. Turn them on if needed and then go down to load. Now remember from before, if you updated your slang shaders, you're gonna to wanna to go into the shader slang folder. If it was GLSL, you'll wanna go into the GLSL folder. Now there are so many shaders in here to experiment with, so feel free to play around and test and see which ones you like. I'll go through just a few to give you an idea of what these shaders can do. The cream of the crop shaders, in my opinion, are from developer Hyperspace Madness and now are included by default with RetroArch. They're found under the bezel folder and then the mega bezel folder. Be forewarned that these shaders require a pretty decent system to run, so it's best to use them with a lighter core like SNES 9X. Also, since these perform special RetroArch Voodoo, we have to change a setting that's found in main menu under video and scaling. We want to change the aspect ratio to full. Now be sure to change this back to your default if you decide not to use the mega bezel shaders. Once we've made that change we can start applying some of these shaders to see just how incredible they actually look.
I hope some of these tips will help you have some good old fashioned retro gaming fun. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching and happy gaming, my friends.